Good morning, beloved souls, wonderful souls of South Freeport Congregational Church. I have said it a couple of times to many of you already. It is so, so wonderful to see all of you, for us to finally be able to gather together in person on this beautiful day to worship our great God. God bless you all. Thank you all for being here. This is such a great turnout, and so we are thankful that you are here today. As we begin our time of service, there are a few administrative items that I'd like to go over with you for the beginning. First of all, we are in person here this morning, obviously outside. And then for the next two Sundays, for the 20th and the 27th, we will once again have our pre-recorded services. And then beginning on July the 4th, the first Sunday in July, we will be back in person, back inside the sanctuary. Now, you may be wondering, why are we doing it this way? I know it probably feels a little chaotic, but in the process of the in-person worship planning committee, planning for our return, we were putting things in place to take into account social distancing, masks, vaccinations, all of those things. And so in the process, as we were laying out the plans, God's creature, welcome. <laughs> He's a Christian too. <laughs> In the process of planning, <laughs> in the process of planning, things have changed, guidelines have relaxed, and so we are continuing to mold and change accordingly with that. So we just ask for your patience as we continue to transition based on what's happening both within our communities and within the country and around the world. And again, we appreciate your patience as we make these changes. Second. I want to give a great big thank you to the CE committee, to the families, to the children who made last week's Children, Youth, and Young Adult Sunday what it was. Can we give a round of applause to all of them? It was an absolutely heartwarming service, and if you have not had an opportunity to watch the video, I do invite you to please take some time to go and do that because you will be touched. I also want to take a moment and thank the in-person worship committee because there have been many, many hours spent over the last several weeks and few months as we have had many Zoom calls, document planning, putting all of these things in place that would allow for our safe return and to be together. Finally, you are going to note that today and in the weeks to come, that we are having an abbreviated service. It is not going to be the full length service that we are accustomed to. Now that is intentional as we continue to watch for the developments in the whole COVID pandemic that we've been in. And so we're gonna to continue to have a shortened service as we go back into the church just to make sure that we are socially distancing and limiting the amount of time that we're physically in close quarters with. You are also going to notice that we are not passing the offering plate and will not be passing it when we return inside, but there is an offering plate over on the table and I invite you to please leave your offering when you leave. You can also, through two other ways, you can donate by sending in your pledge in the mail to the address here at the church or you can also go online and pledge electronically. Now, with all of that said, in the presence of God, in the presence of all of you, just take a deep breath with me. Let us settle into this place, into this time of worship where we celebrate the Spirit of God that is here amongst us with each and every one of us. Let us now meet in worship. This morning's meditation comes to us from Henry Nouwen, who is a beloved Dutch priest theologian. Waiting in this period of learning, the longer we wait, the more we hear about him for whom we are waiting. And now will you join me in the responsive call to worship? Sing praises to God, all you faithful ones. God hears us and our sorrow. 
but it seemed that there was no way God showed us a new way. Where there was no mercy, God surprises us with fresh mercy. And while we waited for this day to arrive, God waited with us there, it's us here. With all our heart, let us worship. And now join with me in the unison prayer of the invocation. O faithful God, you yearn to be so close to us that we can know you in every breath, in every hope, in every relationship, in every waiting moment. We long for us to trust in your power, to remain tied in new possibilities, new joys, new hope. Lead us here today and teach us to recognize the ways of life and the hope to which you are leading us. May our desires become your desires, our work become yours, and our community the place where you are sought and found. <coughs> There's no time delay. What's going on here? <laughs> so will you join? Let us join together in singing the first hymn that we've been singing since one year, three months, and five days ago. Oh God, our help in ages past, verses one through three and verse six. to hear that organ play. What a blessing, what a joy it is. This morning, we have two scripture passages for you, one from the psalm and one from 2 Corinthians. And what you're going to notice today, if you haven't already figured it out, is that the theme of this service has to do with waiting. Now, the psalm text is a liturgy and praise of God. And while the original occasion for the text is unknown, you will hear references, as Steve reads, to a new song. And that suggests for national deliverance is what that is speaking of. 
And as you will hear when Steve reads the verse speaking about waiting and hope for the Lord. Our second reading from 2 Corinthians finds Paul, which many of you have heard me talk about how I truly relate to Paul and often take great comfort and guidance in him and also really relate to his letter writing. We find that Paul is in a very challenging situation as he writes to the church in Corinth. The purpose of his letter is that Paul has learned that there are false teachers that have infiltrated the church there. And the false teachers are creating a lot of chaos for Paul. He is finding that they are challenging his personal integrity, his authority, and who he is as an apostle. What I want to call your attention to in this text is the sharing of his struggles that he has experienced. And what rings true for me in this text is his acclaim of now is the time. Now is the time of God's favor. So Steve. So I'll be reading Psalm 33, verses 1 through 9, 13 through 15, and 18 through 22. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise God. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to God with the ten-string lyre. Sing a new song, play skillfully, and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. God is faithful in all that he does. The Lord gives righteousness and justice. The earth is full of God's unfailing love. <clears throat> By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry hosts by the breath of God's mouth. God gathers the waters of the sea into jars and puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all people of the world revere him. For God spoke and it came to be. God commanded and it stood firm. From heaven, the Lord looks down and, look, and sees all humankind. From God's dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. God forms the hearts of all who consider everything they do. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear God, on those whose hope is in God's unfailing love. To deliver them from death, and alive in them. Wait in hope for the Lord. God is our help and our shield. God, our hearts rejoice. For we trust in God's holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And now from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 through 10. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and in hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love truthful speech and in the power of God with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left. Through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten not yet alone, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making me having nothing, and yet possessing everything. And now I invite you to speak with me 
glory of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now would you please join me in a moment of prayer. O oh, holy God who comes to us in this sacred place as we gather your children once again to worship, how joyful are our hearts. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O oh God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Our text from 2 Corinthians this morning finds us with a letter from Paul to the church in Corinth. And as I mentioned in the description, it is a very frustrating time for him as there are these intruders, these imposters who have been speaking against him, against his work and against his authority. And so as he is writing, he is attempting to distinguish himself from these imposters. And he says those words now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. In this account of events, Paul is saying to the church, now is the time for us to patch things up. But there is something that truly speaks to me in this letter. Beginning in verse 4, he begins to list all of those things that he has experienced throughout the course of his ministry. He says... As servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, distresses. He speaks about his beatings and his imprisonments, his sleepless nights, his hunger, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. And as he goes through it, he out all of these struggles and we think about the journey of the Apostle Paul throughout his ministry, I could not help but think about the last 15 to 16 months. I couldn't help but think about all the experiences that you, each one of you have encountered, many of you physically alone, waiting at home, waiting for the pandemic to be over, waiting to rejoin with people as we have today, waiting to reunite as a congregation. You know, when we think about waiting, waiting is just part of life. It is something that we are all going to do throughout the rest of our lives. There are going to be those moments where we wait. But can it be oh so hard to do sometimes? The Bible is full of stories of our ancestors as they have waited Think about the Israelites that waited and waited to arrive into the promised land. We think about Noah who waited for the floodwaters to recede. We think about Paul as he waited in jail those many times, waiting for the opportunity to get back out and to continue his ministry. We all wait too. Unfortunately, our society is one that has become such that we don't know how to wait for anything. And so we place our orders on Amazon and we wait those two days and it just seems like a tragedy for us to have to wait two days for something to arrive in the mail. We want it tomorrow. And wouldn't it be all the better if we could get it this afternoon or within the next hour? It just seems unconscionable that we have to wait any longer. I am even now at the age of my life where I remember as a child having to do the catalog ordering, mailing in the check with all that you ordered with the disclaimer, please allow a minimum of four to six weeks. Can you imagine waiting four to six weeks now for anything that we order? And as a child, <clears throat> excuse me, every waking moment of school was spent waiting, waiting for the next break, the break at Thanksgiving, the break at Christmas, spring break, and finally the waiting was over, <clears throat> and we would have summer, and after a month in, we were waiting for school, we were waiting for it to begin again. 
Well, it has been a long 16 months or so of our world being in a state of waiting. Once the pandemic began, we began waiting for news about how serious the virus was, waiting to see what work and school was going to be like, waiting for a vaccine, waiting for things to return to normal. We, as a congregation, painfully waiting for this day when we would be able to be in person worshiping again, together once again. And even as we watch the news and see things changing around us, we wait for things to return to normalcy. Yet the question is, will things ever be what they were? Will they be the normal that we are accustomed to? Can they be? Should they be? Our faith in God, unfortunately, does not make any of us immune to having to wait. As I reflect on Paul's letter and his list of struggles, I sincerely have thought about all of you. I have thought about the struggles that you have faced over the last 15 to 16 months and how painful that waiting was for some of you. There are those of you who waited and waited and waited to be able to see your children and grandchildren. There are those of you who waited to see your parents, your friends, and other loved ones. We have waited by the TV the latest news, and we have watched intently as life the world over was changed. And in the midst of being home alone, there are those who have waited for a chance to see loved ones in healthcare facilities or to visit in hospitals. There have been those who have waited by the fall to hear if a loved one made it through the night. And there are those that have been waiting for a chance to memorialize one's life that was lost in the midst of the pandemic, whether from the pandemic itself or from some other cause. We have gathered and we have waited for the bell to finish ringing as it honored all of the lives that were lost in the midst of the pandemic. And then last summer, we waited once again as we heard the news of David's illness, at first believing that it was a stroke, and then we waited to hear what the final diagnosis would be. And we began to wait and see what the impact was going, it was going to have on Reverend Sally's ministry with us. And now, now we find ourselves in a moment of waiting again for the sorrow to be no more as we grieve her too early departure from us and her ministry. And just when we want to exclaim, oh God, haven't we waited enough? Now we wait again as we move through this transition time, of pulpit supply, then wait for the bridge ministers to start, and then we wait for a new subtle pastor to begin, hopefully sooner than later. What else? What else are you waiting for? today. Yet, in the midst of the waiting, I believe that the time will come to where we will say, as Paul did, now, now is the time of God's favor. Over the last several months, while it may have felt like that we were waiting alone, beloved, we did not. There in the midst of our struggles, waiting and waiting, there God was in the midst. The presence of the divine that sat with us in each of those waiting moments. The same God that Paul spoke of and traveled with him throughout his difficulties is the same God that has waited and does wait and will wait with each one of us too. And so as you reflect over the last 15 to 16 months, I ask you to think about where have you experienced God in those moments of waiting? Where have you found comfort in your heart? Beloved souls, you have not and will not wait alone, for there in the midst, there in the midst, carrying each one of your hopes, grief, sorrows, joys, right alongside you, is our amazing God who cares for you and loves you. 
The psalmist knew where to turn in this time of waiting. And I love verse 20 where we read, We wait and hope for the Lord. God is our help and our shield. The psalmist calls out, Sing a new song from heaven. The Lord looks down and sees all humankind. In the midst of waiting, may you know that you do not wait alone. I found a prayer that I thought was so incredibly appropriate for today. And it is a prayer that as I look out and I see each one of your faces today, I want you, as I say this prayer, I want you to think about that it is for you. Every single one of you, as you reflect over the past year, hopes and sorrows and griefs and all of the many things that you have encountered in this period of waiting, this is a blessing that I offer. This prayer is taken from the book Circle of Grace by Jan Richardson. Hear these words, because again, they are for you. It is entitled, A Blessing for Waiting. Who wait for the night to end, bless them who wait for the night to begin, bless them. Who wait in the hospital room, who wait in the cell, who wait in prayer, bless them. Who wait for news, who wait for the phone call, who wait for a word, who wait for a job, a house, a child, bless them who wait for one who will not come home, who wait for the one who will come home, bless them. Who wait with fear, who wait with joy, who wait with peace, who wait with rage, who wait for the end, who wait for the beginning, who wait alone, who wait together, bless them. Who wait without knowing for what they want, or why, bless them. <clears throat> who wait when they should not wait, who wait when they should be in motion, who wait when they need to rise, who wait when they need to set out, bless them. Who wait for the end of waiting, who wait for the fullness of time, who wait empty, open, and ready, who wait for you, O oh, bless. Amen. Let's now, now move into the time where we are able to offer our prayers together. And how wonderful it is that we are able to gather in the spirit of prayer how wonderful it is this morning to be able to ask all of you as we are gathered, what are your joys, what are your concerns that you would like to lift up this day? I lift up great joy for all of you for this time as we begin to transition, coming back together to be able to worship together. Are there any others this morning? I now invite us to be in a moment of prayer. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We are all grateful for your presence. It is all for God. Thank you. Yes, Joe. During this period of video, so thank you to Beth and him who have done an incredible job. So much behind the scenes administrative work that Beth has done in sharing her incredible skills and talent with us. Thank you, thank you. And I do see, but I want to give you a round of applause. So thank you.
Are there others? Now let us join together in prayer. All loving God, present with us in the moments of life while we wait, we rejoice today in the words of Paul, now is the time of your favor. We sing our songs of thanks to you as we gather in person today. How blessed is this moment on this beautiful Sunday morning. How sweet it is, the gathering of your children today. Today we remember the prayer requests that have been lifted up, both the spoken and the unspoken, those that are written in the bulletin and those that are written on our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for healing in these moments of illness, comfort in times of loss, love where the heart is troubled, your presence of holy comfort, holy peace while we wait. I pray for your blessings on each of your beloved souls for the days ahead as we navigate this time of change. From pulpit supply to bridge minister to a settled minister in the months to come, we take comfort, God. We take comfort in knowing no matter what the change, there you are in the midst with us. May we each be patient, kind, understanding, forgiving, and loving to one another. Thank you for the gifts of the day, and we thank you, O oh God, for the gift of prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, and I invite you to join with me, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. go from this place, those who wait, who wait not alone, may you know the unfailing love of God that waits with you. 
May God bless you. May God keep you. And let all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.